man dies in a suspected early morning hit and run in Singleton. Family tragedy, a horror crash, kills a pregnant mother and her unborn twins. A wall of water floods Indonesia, destroying everything in its path. And a final goal thriller. He's the Eagles from the West have clinched the AFL Premiership in the dying moments. This is NBN News with Tyson Cottrell. Good evening. Tonight, a search is underway for a driver believed to be responsible for a fatal hit and run in the Hunter this morning. A man visiting Singleton was found dead by the side of the road in the early hours. On a quiet suburban street in Glen Reading, police slam on the brakes again and again. They're trying to piece together what happened to a 44-year-old man who was found on the side of Carrington Street. This morning between 4am and 5.30, um, a man in his 40s was walking home um, to where he was staying in Singleton and Glen Reading. Um, it appears that a vehicle, um, we're not quite sure what the description is, has, um, has hit him and he's, um, he's died at the scene. Markings on the ground show where it's believed the visitor was hit. A passing driver found the man and called police. The culprit, nowhere to be seen. We'd just like to speak to the driver just to find out um, you know, what happened and um, get a better picture of the events. Chilling details reveal a silver hatchback was spotted pulling up next to the body. A female driver got out, checked on the man and drove away. Police are desperate to find anyone who can fill in the blanks. We're just trying to speak to anybody that might have been in the area around Glen Reading between 4am and 5.30 around Singleton or the Putty Road. Um, we're just wanting to speak to anybody who might have seen someone or a car or anything. George Mar, NBN News. It's one of the worst crashes hardened police and paramedics say they've ever seen. A teenage learner driver and a woman pregnant with twins killed in a horror crash in Sydney's West. The head-on collision happened less than 24 hours into the holiday road operation, with investigators looking at whether speed was to blame. A cluster of flashing lights, the warning sign something terrible had happened. <coughs> Police, paramedics and firefighters gathering around a scene of destruction that's left a family engulfed in loss. It was a mess. It was an absolute mess. In one of the wrecked cars was 17-year-old Ahn Huang. I was just telling her everything was going to be all right, basically just trying to reassure her, but, you know, I didn't even know if she could hear me. She was behind the wheel learning to drive before being killed. Her sister-in-law, Catherine Huang, sat in the back seat, pregnant with twins due in just weeks. The 23-year-old also killed, along with her unborn baby. Her husband, Bronco, the sole survivor in their car, now fighting for life in hospital. This is probably one of the worst scenes that I have been to in my career. The Bosley Park family was hit out of nowhere by a car driven by Richard Moananu. Witnesses claim he was travelling at more than 100 kilometres an hour in a 60 zone. I've never really seen anyone drive like he did, like to be honest with you. He he can't fly. His master was heading south on the northern road when it hit a median strip, becoming airborne and crashing into the Hoang's Nissan, heading in the opposite direction. If they were going 60 kilometres an hour, there's no way that sort of damage would have been done. The impact crushed both cars beyond recognition, turning them into cubes of bucketed steel and shattered glass. It's horrendous. There's just chaos everywhere. Debris, car parts all over the road. Jared Sherlock was one of the first on the scene racing to help the injured. The crash was so bad, I was just just looking for it. Like I, I literally had to look for people in the car. The whole community grieving the senseless loss of lives. I mean, everyone's feeling this, so I think, uh, I, I think Australia needs to wake up. Zara James, NBN News. At least 384 people have been killed when a powerful earthquake shook the Indonesian island of Sulawesi before a massive tsunami flattened entire villages. It's feared the death toll will rise dramatically with more than 350 people in hospitals and dozens more still missing. Water nearly two metres high barreling to shore in the city of Palu. <laughs> The person with the smartphone knows what's going to happen and turns away for a second. 
and then looks back. Buildings pulverized as the noise of destruction is drowned out by screams of fear. The water surged through the streets and the local mosque was destroyed. The city's main bridge was another casualty. Left bent and buckled by the force of the water. These people were even closer to the tsunami's impact zone and they made a run for it. Just off the coast, a crew of a ship rode the giant whirlpool as the wave rushed in and then retreated. The island of Sulawesi, northeast of Bali, was thrown into turmoil by a 7.5 magnitude earthquake which hit just after 6 p.m. local time last night. At the main hospital, many of the injured were treated outside because of the threat of aftershocks while the death toll continues to mount. It's the second major earthquake in Indonesia in as many months. And the tsunami brings back the memories of the Boxing Day catastrophe in 2004. Perched on the infamous Ring of Fire, the threat of a major tremor is always present. But it's something these people can never get used to. David Ryan, NBN News. In the lead up to the Prime Minister's first face-to-face -face meeting with Donald Trump in two months, Australia's diplomatic push for unity has gone global. New Foreign Minister Maurice Payne addressed the United Nations, calling for collaboration in our region as her replacement in defence made his first overseas trip. On the battleground in Afghanistan, the new defence minister met Australian troops. At the base outside Kabul, the faces of 41 soldiers killed in the conflict line a wall. I feel very humble to be here. Christopher Pine joined top brass and top gear on a US Army chinook in the skies above Kabul. These Australian troops are working alongside US allies as part of a NATO mission. They're putting their lives at risk when they pull on the uniform and go into these theatres of war. There's unity on the battleground, but 11,000 kilometres away at the United Nations in New York, there's a desire for diplomatic unity to keep the United States interested in our region. If this place and our membership of it stand for anything, then we stand for an international order based on rules and cooperation. As the US slugs it out in a trade war with China and has escalating tensions with Europe, there's growing concern Donald Trump is dismantling the American-built systems that govern international relations and form the bedrock of Australia's foreign policy. Solutions begin with collaboration. Then there's the issue of Iran. Donald Trump pulled the U.S. out of the deal that forced Tehran to limit its nuclear ambitions. The Iran deal was a windfall for Iran's leaders. It's in our collective interests that controls on Iran's nuclear program remain in place. Remain in place. Maurice Payne's UN address was a plea to global leaders to end the build-up of nuclear and chemical weapons particularly closer to home. The world watches with anticipation the negotiations between the United States and North Korea. And Prime Minister Scott Morrison will get his first chance to be face to face with Donald Trump when the two leaders meet at the G20 summit in Argentina at the end of November. Jonathan Kersley, NBN News. Large plumes of smoke clouded much of Newcastle today from a small bushfire at Birmingham Gardens. The bellowing black smoke seen here from Sandgate Cemetery. The blaze ignited around 11 o'clock this morning and was brought under control by mid-afternoon. No properties were threatened. Traffic was flowing freely along Hunter Street today for the first time in 12 months. It's the first day some local businesses have seen steady foot traffic since light rail construction work began last year. The new addition to the road marks more than 70 years since a tram network ran through Newcastle's CBD. Meanwhile, the old Newcastle railway station has officially reopened 
with a street party underway tonight. The area will be relaunched as a multi-purpose public space, including heritage-restored features, with future plans for a cafe and retail store. A 12-year-old boy is in a serious but stable condition after being bitten by a snake at Stockton this afternoon. Paramedics were called to the scene at around 1.30, finding the boy with pale lips and discoloured feet. The Westpac rescue helicopter was tasked to the scene, but he was taken by road ambulance to John Hunter Hospital. It's that time of year again. The flags go up and the beachgoers flock to the surf. This summer's patrol season was marked with a special milestone in Newcastle, but it also came with a clear message from Lifesavers. One of Newcastle's most prized possessions to date, along with 12 other Hunter Surf lifesaving branches, celebrated the beginning of patrol season and 100 years of raising the flags, marked on the sand, in the ocean and from the headlands. <laughs> And then when he, when he played the last post in Reveille, it was really quite touching because our forefathers set us up and how grateful are we that they, they set us up with a great culture. Newcastle's Lord Mayor presented each of the six Newcastle clubs with a $10,000 birthday present. At Nobby, so I'll be buying... Uh more outboard motors, more rescue boards, more tubes. Patrol season runs from now until April. Last summer, 22 people drowned along the New South Wales coast between December and February. Overwhelmingly, men continue to represent the majority of drownings. However, last year, seven women lost their lives, almost doubling the previous year. The message to swimmers is simple. Bay between the flags, swim with a friend, and obey what the surf lifesavers are saying what the surf lifesavers are saying. Meanwhile, the 15 Central Coast clubs also celebrated their first patrol of the season, with plenty of juniors leading the way. Our goal is to have zero drownings on our beaches, uh, especially our patrol beaches. Uh, we work really hard on our beaches. We work hard within the community, with our community education. Uh, and our messages uh, are getting to the young children, which we believe get to the parents. George Amar, NBN News. The small town of Dungog came alive today for its fourth annual arts festival. The main street was coloured with all kinds of characters as the country's town's cultural side took centre stage. It's the flagship event of the year that puts this country town on the map. From vintage vehicles to fire engines, it was all put on display in the main street of Dungog today. It was really a lot of fun. And seeing all that old machinery and the old cars, it was just brilliant. Cultural icons, both old and new, attracted curious eyes on the footpath. Alongside furry friends and fluorescent ladies, it truly was an eclectic mix of characters making their way down Dowling Street. 